Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is uh, Friday, March 31st, and this is your morning prayer. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, we're at day 75 of our journey through the Bible, and this is Deuteronomy chapters 14 through 16. A little bit shorter than we had yesterday, and... Um, and maybe not as much to to dive into here, uh, because a lot of this is kind of recapping, um, summarizing what we've already read previously <laughs> about um, some of the dietary laws and restrictions and uh, the uh, canceling of debts and how they would handle that. And then the three, uh, the three, the three, the three feasts, the three main feasts that uh, they were expected to keep throughout the year. So this is all should be familiar territory if you've been going through this, but we'll just give the uh, brief overview and, and point out a couple of things. So um, the dietary laws. What are we going to say about that? Well, um, the the main, as with all the laws, really, all, all the laws that are given to the people of Israel, um, you know, certainly the, I mean, the first real thing about these laws is God has given them to them. Okay? So they are to follow them. That's where we start. <laughs> uh, a lot of people want to kind of jump in and be like, well, why, why this law? Why that law? Um, foundationally, because that's what God said. So like when we get into things like the dietary laws and why were certain animals allowed to be eaten, certain animals were not, some were considered clean, some were considered unclean. Um, the, the unclean, clean nature of animals has nothing to do with, with like hygiene, you know, whether they are clean or not, like superficially, it, it, it all has to do with what God has declared. Okay. And, uh, there's, there, there are a number of different ideas, um, thoughts about what makes an animal clean or unclean or made an animal clean or unclean, why God said this or that. Um, and some explanations are better than others. <laughs> some seem plausible and whatnot. But really, at the end of the day, God said, do this and not that. And that's all there is. Um, we do see kind of from the very beginning of chapter 14, um, Moses points out three, three ways that the, uh, the people of Israel are set apart to be God's people. He's, he calls them, he reminds them that they are children of the Lord, reminds that they are peop uh, holy people or set apart, and that they are treas a treasured possession. So... Um, that kind of works with the overarching uh, th theme here of being set apart. You know, God is saying, okay, do these things because this will set you apart from the nations. And, and certainly some of these things and some of the um, uh, restrictions seem to um, go against some of the practices of the neighboring nations, kind of like um, the, the last little bit in chapter 14 about not boiling a, a a goat in the milk of its mother, which is a very kind of the way it just sort of gets tapped in there at the end. It's, it's a little odd. Um, and it doesn't necessarily fit, seem to fit with all the rest of what is being commanded here. Um, there's been some, some thought that, um, points to some practices of the far Eastern cultures that, um, that seem to indicate that boiling a, guilt, uh, a a child, a kid, a goat <laughs> in its mother's milk was part of a fertility ritual or rite. And um, so God is, is kind of pointing out the things that the nations around them did and said, okay, and you will not do this because you are not them. Um, so part of these dietary laws to set them apart from other people so that they were kind of outwardly noticeable to be different, um, but also for them so that they would remember like, oh yeah, we are different. <laughs> um, you know, so when they would see people, you know, eating a, a nice pork sandwich, um, you know, as, as delicious as it might smell or, or taste, <laughs> they would say, you know, like, oh, but that's not what we do. 
Why? Ah, because God has set us apart, because God was the one who brought us out of the land of Egypt and kind of goes down this whole um, thing that, uh, that Moses is trying to get them to remember. So that is probably the best way to um, to approach those things. And we also in 14 uh, get a bit bit about the tithe, um, instructing uh, about that. The interesting thing to point out here is that um, we, we see the foundation for the practice of the money changers. And when Jesus goes to the temple and he turns over all the tables of the money changers, here's actually where we get the foundation of that. Because what, what Moses instructs them is because now they are going to be possibly traveling long distances to get to the temple rather than being the tabernacle right in the center of, of their living space. Um, Moses allows for them to um, take their tithe, you know, of, of all their, their stuff to sell it to, for silver, um, something that is easily transportable, bring that silver to the temple. And then when they're at the temple to exchange the silver, then for the, the herds, the, the flocks, the, the grain, whatever it is, whatever it is they're, they're offering. So they could do that. So that's where why the money changers would set up shop at the temple to be able to sell them, you know, the, the goods for their offerings for their, for their silver. Now, of course, the problem, you know, the problem with that is that by Jesus's time and what Jesus is upset about is that they are, um, you know, they're cheating people. They're using it as an excuse to, it has nothing really to do with, with bringing the appropriate uh, offerings to God, but just to make money and to do so, you know, right at the, the steps of the, the temple there. So that's why that was a problem. All right. Chapter 15 uh, is about the canceling of debts and the provision for the poor. The interesting thing about what we see here is that, you know, God um, through Moses says that there should be no poor among you. Okay. And points out that through the abundance of the land, and if you listen to my commandments and I will, will, will provide for you and, and you will have more than you need. He says there, there should be no poor among you. But then he also says later, and there will always be poor in your land. And he gives instruction for how to handle the poor. And so this is not a, a contradiction at all. Uh, this is God saying, there should be no poor among you. Okay. <laughs> if you are doing things as I command you, there will be no poor. Of course they didn't. And God knows this. And so he allows for like, okay, this is how it should be. But I know you're going to mess it up. So this is what you're going to do. Um, God is keeping in mind their the reality, you know, their, their sinfulness and saying like this, this is the ideal and this is what you will be able to do. And this is how you should deal with it in the right way. So God is commanding them, instructing them and taking into account their sin to say, and I know, <laughs> I know you will fall short. Um, and uh, this is, this is how you will, will deal with that. So God always mindful of, of, of us, <laughs> and our limitations and our, uh, our vulnerabilities and weaknesses. So, uh, kind of a, kind of a fun thing there. And then, uh, chapter 16, which is just a, a kind of a summarizing of the three feasts, which is unleavened bread, uh, Passover, uh, the feast of weeks and the feast of booths. Uh, those were the three main ones that, um, that they were expected to keep throughout the year. And, uh, just the instruction on, on how to do this as they are all spread out, um, so nothing, nothing terribly new to, uh, uh, to share about that, but uh, that's what you've got in these texts today. So there you go. Deuteronomy 16 through, oh, 14 through 16. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, well, blessings to you on this Friday. I hope, uh, hope you have a great day. Hope everything goes well. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.